The African continent is splitting in two. What's happening? The Earth's surface is not static. It's a landscape constantly changing, shaped by the movements of the underlying tectonic plates. The theory of plate tectonics has revolutionized our understanding of Earth's geological processes, including the formation of continents, mountains, volcanoes, and earthquakes. One of the most intriguing questions posed by this theory is whether Africa is on the verge of splitting into two continents. Mounting evidence suggests that, yes, there will come a day when the entire region of the Horn of Africa will break away from the continent and drift into the ocean. The evidence comes from studies conducted over the past half century on the massive scar known as the Rift Valley, also the cradle of human species, and from the long deep fissures that are opening even today in the lands of Ethiopia and Kenya. This video, prepared as usual by Insane Curiosity Channel, will attempt to explain the causes of this fascinating phenomenon. Just over 100 years ago in 1912, a German geologist, meteorologist, and explorer named Alfred Wegener made a discovery that would revolutionize the study of our planet. Looking at a map of the Earth and examining the boundaries of the American and African continents more closely, he noticed a certain resemblance between the shape of the eastern coast of South America and the western coast of Africa, which seemed to fit together like two pieces of a puzzle. The scientist then conceived the idea that millions of years ago, the five continents could have been joined into a single block, later fragmented for reasons still to be determined. He called the hypothetical supercontinent by the name of Pangaea, a term that in ancient Greek means all lands. Building on this idea of a supercontinent, Wegener hypothesized the scenario that would later become popularly known as continental drift where continental platforms would be free over time to move, gather, and drift apart. His theory was still incomplete and entirely intuitive, as it did not yet provide explanations for the mechanisms underlying such continuous movement. What we know today is that the Earth's surface consists of a solid shell formed by part of the mantle and the Earth's crust. The shell is divided into several plates, assembled somewhat like puzzle pieces, called tectonic plates or lithospheric plates. There are seven major plates and many smaller plates. Not only continents, but also oceans lie on these plates. Some boundaries between two plates are found along high mountain ranges, while others are hidden on the ocean floor. For most of the Phanerozoic Eon, from 500 million years ago to the present era, the plates gathered in the supercontinent Pangaea shared by a common history and were populated by the same plants and animals. Things began to change about 180 million years ago when the modern Southern Atlantic Ocean, Antarctic Ocean, and Indian Ocean began to form. One after the other, the plates increasingly resembling the shapes of the current continents began to drift apart from each other. Scientists began to understand this in the decades that followed by comparing the geology and fossils of the separation zones, but the cause of these movements remained unknown. Even Wegener, had he known what lies inside the Earth, would have understood what moves the continents, but it was only about 40 years after the publication of his theory that geologists began to realize that the heat inside the Earth is so high that the rocks are in an almost liquid state. In the mantle, the mass of hotter rock at its base rises to the surface, cools down, and then sinks back down, creating circular motions. These motions move the plates a bit like a conveyor belt, albeit incredibly slowly. Moreover, the motion of each plate is decidedly chaotic. Some collide with each other while others move away. For example, the European and American plates move apart by 3 to 4 centimeters per year, the same speed at which our fingernails grow. The Atlantic Ocean that separates the two continents thus becomes wider and wider. There are other points on Earth where the plates come together. In these cases, one of the plates may sink below the other or the plates may collide with each other, creating mountain ranges like the Himalayas, the Andes, or the Alps. The boundaries between the plates are therefore very active points, and it is precisely here that most volcanoes are found and many earthquakes occur. Just to quantify the extent of these movements, consider that Antarctica moves half a centimeter per year towards Australia. In turn, Australia moves towards Asia at 7.5 centimeters per year. If this continues, it will merge with Indonesia and the Philippines in 40 million years. The central western Pacific plate moves 11 centimeters per year towards the northwest, 
towards Eurasia, while the eastern part of the Pacific moves away in the opposite direction, eastward at a speed of 6 centimeters. The central and eastern parts of Asia point eastward towards America at 2 to 3 millimeters per year. India continues to push northward against the continent 5 centimeters per year, causing a continuous uplift of the Himalayas. Latin America continues at 3 centimeters per year, the westward movement that separated it from Africa about 65 million years ago. Africa, returning to the protagonist of this video, is instead moving northward, increasingly squeezing the Mediterranean. Africa and Europe are indeed approaching by 2 centimeters every year, while the old continent moves northwestward by a few millimeters each year. However, it's not the overall movement of the African plate that currently interests us, but the fact that the continent is likely to be splitting at the level of the Arabian Peninsula due to the continuous tectonic activity of the East African Rift system. The Horn of Africa could thus separate from the rest of the continent and develop its own oceanic basin process, of course, lasting millions of years. That the separation process is still ongoing has been witnessed in recent years by the appearance of two incredible rifts. The first one occurred in 2005 in Ethiopia, where, accompanied by strong earthquakes in the Afar Desert region, a 50-kilometer-long and 20-meters-wide fissure opened up. In early 2005, a huge fracture began to open up and crack the ground along the Ethiopian desert an extensive expanse of arid and vegetation-free land that characterizes a vast area of Ethiopia. Over the months, this huge fracture began to widen further, extending to neighboring areas. The phenomena caused concern, but at the same time, great interest among scientists who rushed to study the phenomena after learning of the news. It was interpreted as the manifestation of a change that in the future will forever alter the geography of the entire African continent. The objection was, how could such a huge thing have formed in such a short time? It seemed truly unbelievable. But in the following years, a very thorough study clarified that areas subject to intense volcanic activity located along the edges of oceanic tectonic plates can suddenly dissolve into large sections rather than gradually as previously believed. Hang on a sec, guys, before we continue. Be sure to join the Insane Curiosity channel. Click on the bell, you will help us to make products of even higher quality. The second fissure, 15 meters deep, 20 meters wide, and several kilometers long, appeared instead, apparently in 2018 in Kenya. The incredible images of the large and very deep crevice, which caused the collapse of the Nairobi Narek Highway, and also strong seismic activity, made headlines around the world at the time. What was astonishing in this case as well was the speed with which it seemed to have formed. The blame, unlike what was determined in Ethiopia, was attributed to rain. According to experts, weeks of precipitation in March of 2018 could have eroded the softer and more superficial layers of the soil, exposing the crevice, which probably had already formed thousands or millions of years ago. A fissure that remained unnoticed because it was filled with volcanic ash from eruptions of the distant past, and that was suddenly exposed when the deep layers of water-soaked ash collapsed. Apart from the exceptional nature of the phenomena and its still-debated origin, the location of the fissure has, however, contributed to reopening a decades-old debate about the possibility that one day the African plate may split into two parts. The Kenyan Rift manifested itself within a region called the East African Rift, one of the most tectonically active regions in the world, identified by a huge valley that began to develop already in the Miocene about 25 million years ago and which extends for an incredible length of almost 6,000 kilometers from the Red Sea to Mozambique. A depression within which, and along its entire length, an intense seismic and volcanic activity often occurs, responsible among other things for the formation of mountains such as Kilimanjaro and Mount Kenya. Since the 1970s, there has been increasing evidence that the African plate is splitting into two parts, called the Nubian Plate and the Somali Plate, precisely along the Eastern African Rift. The Nubian Plate includes most of the African continent and is located to the west of the rift. The Somali Plate, much smaller, is instead located to the east of the rift system. As the Nubian and Somalian plates continue to diverge, the rift system expands, potentially splitting the African continent into two. According to geologists, four countries in the Horn of Africa, Somalia and half of Ethiopia, Kenya and Tanzania, are destined in the distant future to break away from Africa to form a new continent, 
as has already happened in the past with Madagascar and New Zealand. Geologists and geophysicists are still debating what could have caused all this. The current leading theory is that mantled heat plumes are causing a magma dome to form beneath Kenya and Ethiopia, gradually thinning the overlying lithosphere. The thinning of the lithosphere in turn generates enormous volcanic eruptions called flood basalts, which send lava flowing from emerging fissures like floodwaters and has fractured the fragile continental crust into a series of faults. Viewed from above, these faults together forming the Great Rift Valley appear as deep rifts and elongated basins separated by regions of higher ground. But how fast is all this happening? GPS measurements show that through the East African Rift, the Nubian and Somali plates are diverging at an average speed of 7 mm per year. Today, the fissure remains above sea level, but as it widens, the land within the valley will sink, and eventually oceanic waters could flood in, separating the entire Horn of Africa from the mainland. It is still unclear if this will happen, but if it does, it will take tens of millions of years. The splitting of the African continent would have a cascading effect on global plate tectonics, as it would influence the movement and interaction of other tectonic plates around the world. This could lead to changes in the frequency and intensity of geological events, such as earthquakes and volcanic activity in other regions. The formation of a new ocean and the consequent separation of the African continent would likely have a significant impact on global climate patterns. But we are talking about something that will happen millions of years from now. The ongoing geological processes in the East African Rift system, driven by the movement of the Somali and Nubian tectonic plates, are ultimately too far into the future to interfere with the duration of our species. Nevertheless, since this geological event is ongoing, it is measurable and potentially useful for studies that could help predict seismic disasters, saving countless lives. Scientific research, whatever field it operates in, is never an end in itself.